Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I know I always say that when I open, but uh, you know what? We don't give the Lord enough praise. We always ask, but we hardly ever take time just to thank Him. And the other night I was laying in bed and I, I was, you know, saying a prayer. And, uh, of course, I always pray off and on throughout the day and stuff. And uh, But I was saying a prayer before I went to sleep. And uh, I said, started to uh, ask for help uh, for something. And I said, you know what, I'm not going to even ask. I said, I just... You're, you're so good to me, Lord. You're just so good that I, I, I just want to take time just to thank you for just being so wonderful and so great and so merciful for everything, Lord, that you've done. I said, it, you know, it, it's just a, it's a real pleasure to be able to call ourselves saints of God right now. And, and I'll tell you why, because the saints of God, their faith is being tested as well as other people, but they don't see it as so much as a this pandemic or epidemic, whatever you want to call it. People don't really see it as a test or a trial, but it is. It's testing the faith of the people of God because um, it's putting stress on a lot of different areas of people's lives that they normally wouldn't have that stress. They normally wouldn't be tried in that area. So it, it's very difficult for people to um, continue on in the faith. But let me tell you something. <laughs> Whenever uh, the storms, uh, you know, with... I live in Oklahoma, so it, there's always a storm, or it's always windy, or something, and my girls, they don't like the storm at all, and so whenever the storms hit, and the thunder cracks, and uh, real loud, and the lightning strikes, and the wind picks up, it really gives them a fright, and uh, me, I can care less. I'm sitting there playing uh, a game or watching TV or doing whatever um, because it doesn't phase me either way. Um, but the good thing and the lesson about this is even no matter how much the wind blows, no matter how much the storm rages on, no matter what happens that night or throughout that day, there's always an end. There's always a rainbow at the end of the storm. There's always a sunshine. There's always a cloud that is just so perfect in the sky that lets you know that everything's okay. I'm telling you, I can sit there and I can look at the sky all day long because it's just so wonderful because you have these clouds that are just, it's like they're shaped out of the hand of God. And when you look around you and you see the trees and you see the, you see the, uh, animals and how could someone think that this just all popped up on its own that evolution created all of this no it's the hand of the lord that created everything i don't know if uh you can i can't hear you but i want i'd like to think i heard an amen or two out there I don't really have anything prepared. I'm, I'm going to just be honest with you. I got nothing. But the Lord said to do a video. To talk to the people. Uh, and, you know, his people, not mine or anything. But he said to do a video. And uh, so we're just going to see what happens. We're going to see where this goes. Because, you know, uh, when the. Well, let me tell you something. I don't get my sermons from a chronological order or from a website. There's a lot of preachers that do that. They do it from um, orders and studies. And, the, and I'm not speaking out bad against that. I, I, I don't think any of that to be uh, wrong. I, 
I do mine in a different way. I wait until the Lord speaks to me. I wait until the Lord puts something on my heart and then I share it. Because I want that message to be able to go forth and accomplish what the Lord wants it to accomplish. And if it's just me, then it won't. Because I am nothing. I, I am just clay that has been molded from the Lord. And I am from the dirt of the ground, the dust of the ground. And I couldn't heal a fly off a headache. Headache off a fly. Fly with a headache. Yeah. I couldn't heal a fly that had a headache. There we go. I get... I'm sorry. I, I get twisted around sometimes. But, you know... For some reason, the Lord keeps using me. And, look... Let, let's just get honest and real with each other. Everybody acts like we're supposed to all be perfect and everything and uh especially the whenever you're um behind a pulpit or you're teaching or doing whatever it is that you do for the lord people think that you're supposed to be perfect let me tell you i get tongue-tied i get scatterbrained some of the messages in the past, you know, I've said that um, I cut them, cut off in the middle of the sermon due to um, medical issues. That medical issue is I just, uh, I got nothing. You know, I, my, my mind goes blank and my memory just, just fades for a few minutes and... Uh, could be some of the medicine I'm on, I don't know, but, um, it, it's very frustrating for me, uh, because I, I want to do my best for the Lord, and I want the Lord to be proud of me, I want to be able to stand in front of the Lord, and for Him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, and to enter into His gates with, um, without sin, without blemish, without any sort of feeling of uh, that I've not lived up to the potential of the Lord, because let me tell you, there it's it's it, it's one thing to be able to live up to somebody's potential in life, like say your parents, and they have a high uh, expectation, they have a uh, high standards for you and they want you to do this and I want you to accomplish this in life and and, and that and um, sometimes you don't live up to those expectations sometimes you just you, you can't you are who you are but and that's how I feel about the Lord it, it's hard for me because I want to be the best I can be for the Lord. I, I don't want him to be ashamed of me. I don't want him to be disappointed in me. I don't want him up there, you know, shaking his head saying, oh, goodness, what did he do now? You know, uh, um, one of those things. And like I said, I have no idea where this is even going to go. Hmm. I think maybe I do. Give me just a minute here. The Lord's starting to do... Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Being ashamed. Whew. Mm. How many of you have ever... felt ashamed of yourself? Listen, we... have this epidemic that's going on, this pandemic, the coronavirus. A lot of states are requiring us to wear masks and so forth, but the reality of the situation is we've been wearing masks most of our lives because we have been hiding our shame, how we really feel. There's a lot of us out there that feel 
this sense of always negativity and this always just the uh, feeling of shame and guilt over something in the past or something that we did that wasn't right you know the devil just just gets on your nerves like that let me let me tell you He'll sit there and he'll bother you and bug you and get on your nerves until it just like you can't take no more. And I'm going to tell you something that happened to me the other night in bed. Uh, it was about um, 3 o'clock. And maybe, I don't know, I always say 3 o'clock, but I don't think it's always 3 o'clock. But, uh, the Lord, the devil, I just was kind of half in and half out of sleep. And the devil was just fighting me. I mean, he just fighting me, putting all these stupid thoughts in my head. And just kept on, just like this. It's really hard to describe, but it was a hard, um, mental battle as well as physical and different things and uh, at one point but you, you don't have to believe me or nothing but uh, at one point the devil said to me uh, you can't defeat me and I said I know but he can and I'm just talk of course I'm talking about my Lord and guess what the devil went away and I went back to sleep. And he did defeat him. He defeated him a long time ago. And let me tell you, he still helps out his saints of God. He will comfort them. He will take away all that feeling of inadequacy. That feeling of being ashamed. That, that feeling of, of, of not being good enough. Whenever I was a teenager, I really struggled with that. Like I said, I don't know where this is going, but I'm just, uh, I'm rolling with the punches because the Lord's talking to me about being ashamed of yourself. We hide it so good. I mean, we are very good at hiding it. I mean, we put on this mask and, uh, well... Okay, um, huh. I, I, I'm gonna tell you a story, and, uh, well, here we go. When I was a kid, little bitty kid, <coughs> I had a best friend, just like all of us do. And we played together almost every day. And <clears throat> he would come over and we'd play a vac. I'd go over to his house, so forth and so forth. We lived just literally across the street from each other um, and uh, grew up together. And we moved away to a different town, but I still saw him whenever I went and visited my grandma. And uh, he was there one day. And uh, he, uh, we were playing football on the field. And uh, he uh, was just so happy, smiling. He, he just had this great wonderful countenance to him i mean he actually was inspiring me because he because of his attitude his overall uh, uh appearance you know his outlook he just was uh you know like uh so happy and, and just then uh he, we were done.
done playing football when we were going to go uh, spar, which is karate. We both were into martial arts, and uh, he did karate, I did kickboxing, and he said, yeah, we can go spar, you know. And so we were fixing to do that, and his parents called him away, his dad, I think. And uh, that was the last time I saw him before he was in a box. I uh, was at school, and uh, Bill had just rang, and I was fixing to put my stuff in my I put my stuff in my locker, maybe, and I walked over to the door because I was fixing to enter the, the school room, the classroom, and uh, my sister, my brother-in-law were there, and uh, they said uh, Chris had killed himself. I was 12, 13 years old at the time, and uh, so was he. We were born exactly a week apart, and uh, it uh, was quite a tragic experience for a 12-year-old or 13 can't remember your old boy to uh, endure because uh, I didn't understand what had happened. I didn't understand what was going through his head. The police had the suicide note. I didn't know what was what actually transpired. I heard um, some things about what people said that was going on, but I don't really know the, like I said, the last time I saw him was when um, we were walking to my grandmother's from the pasture, and then his dad called him away, and that was it. Next time I'd seen him, it was still an open casket, um, but the next time I saw him, he was in a box, and uh, it just, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, it screwed me up mentally, it screwed with my head, a 12-year-old boy, you know, your best friend puts a gun in his mouth. And I didn't know what to do or how to handle it. But the point of this story is when I saw him playing football that day, he was inspiring me. He was so happy. Everything, everything was just seemed so wonderful. And then I think maybe a month went by before I got the news that he had uh, killed himself. He had a mastered the ability to be able to put on that mask that to cover up that hurt, that shame, whatever it was that was going on inside of him. He put on that mask and he put it on well because nobody even knew anything. I had no idea and um, Nobody really had any clue. It was just out of the blue, and it was so horrible to to experience that. But because he had that mask on, and he would not open up to anyone, and only he knew what really was going on inside of his head, and he took that to the grave with him. Let me tell you, we have hurts and we have feelings and we have things that will stop us from entering in 
to heaven and they will try to and the devil will try to use them and try to get them to destroy us and on the inside and and let me tell you he will use those to try to eat at your very soul why because for one he hates your guts he doesn't want to see you succeed. He doesn't want to see you happy. He doesn't want to see your family happy. Two, he doesn't want to see you go to heaven. He wants to see you burning in hell. And people don't think the devil is really that bad. Let me tell you, he is worse than you could ever imagine. The worst horror story that you've ever, or horror movie that you've ever seen, you could multiply it by a million and still not even touch how horrible he really is. The things that he does on a daily basis to the saints of God. You hear people say, well, the devil's never really bothered me. Of course not. He's already got you. Why would he bother you? You're already doing all of his work for him. Hey, I'm being honest here. I'm being serious. The devil's already got you he's not going to sit there and he's not going to pursue you because you're already doing his bidding you're doing everything that he wants you to do he you're doing all these drugs and you're out there um talking this horrible language and and let me tell you something Mm. i'm feeling my lord oh god thank you jesus thank you jesus I've heard people out of there a million times that will sit there and cuss and cuss and cuss. And I can hear, you know, I'll just step out on the porch and I can hear them down the road. They're just cussing and and, uh, they'll say uh, the GD word, which I absolutely loathe and I cannot stand it. It it just, ugh. And the F-bomb and this and that. And then when I talk to them in person... It's like they cover it up and they find substitutes for that word. And um, they'll be like, darn it or something, you know, instead of the other word. And uh, and the reality is, what does it matter? You're saying it in front of God anyway. I just heard you say it and God heard you say it. Come on now. You think you can hide from the Lord and... When you come in front of the preacher, you have to hide everything. Yes, I understand about the respect aspect, but let me tell you something. If you really want to show respect, watch your tongue 24-7. Do the best you can, because let me tell you, the Lord is out there listening at all. Every second of every moment of every day to every word that you say, every thought that enters into your head, the Lord knows about it. And if you truly love the Lord, you will respect him by not saying those things. Mm. Mm -mm. We say that, oh, well, you know, I went to church on Sunday. I went to church uh, this day. Let me tell you something. You want to praise God and you want to worship God you go to church Monday through Sunday on the days that end in day Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday you go to church on those days every single day because you are the church you are a vessel and temple of the Holy Ghost as the Bible says it And let me tell you something, a lot of people don't go to church because of the hypocrisy, because of the politics. And if I was physically able, I would be very picky about where I went to church anymore. Because I cannot stand the political aspects of it. A church is not a place for politics. A church is a place for worship for love, for people to be saved. That's why nobody's getting saved anymore. They're too caught up in the politics. They're too caught up in what everybody else is doing. Now let me tell you something, church. If you can hear me right now, then... Uh, oh, mm, I'm feeling my God. Let me tell you. 
put away the politics. Get back down to the nitty-gritty of things and start just putting the anointing of God in the church. Start spraying the walls with oil and start allowing God to infiltrate the his spirit into the whole church. Put the politics away. If people want to talk politics in the church, you tell them you take that outside. Listen, sometimes you have to be, I don't want to say so much as blunt, but you have to be uh, stern. And Jesus, because Jesus was that way, he took a whip and cleared out the whole church. Why? Because he said you had made the church of God this holy place, this wonderful place that is supposed to be here to worship and praise the Lord. He said you made it into uh, nothing but money changers and a place of thieves, a market. Now that's debatable because whatever... Uh, a lot of churches have music groups come and they will have sell their tapes and stuff in the back and you know I, I don't personally agree with it because of that part I, I think you want to sell your tapes and sell your records I understand you have to make a living go out to the parking lot and do it don't do it in the house of the Lord I mean it, it that's just my personal opinion though the house of God is pure Listen to what I just said. There is no mask in the house of God. It is pure. And what did I say earlier? We are the temple of the house of the Lord. Now, if you're walking the temple of the house of the Lord, then you ought to act like a house of a temple of the house of the Lord. You ought to speak the way that God wants you to speak. You ought to act the way you want God wants you to act. You ought to behave in a manner that is acceptable unto Christ. Not acceptable unto this world. Not acceptable maybe even under your spouse. But acceptable unto Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said, be ye therefore holy as I am holy. Be ye therefore perfect as I am perfect. And what he was saying by perfect, and a lot of these newer translations, they'll switch it up. But he said perfect because he means blameless. Be blameless. When you stand before the Lord, are you going to have a mask on where you've been hiding all that stuff at? You know, you've been hiding your shame. You've been hiding your guilt. You've been hiding all these feelings. You've been hiding all your sin for all this time. Or are you actually going to stand before the Lord with spotless robe and say, Here I am, Lord. I, 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 I'm ready to enter into the gates. I've thought about the moment a million times when I would see Jesus and I, I thought, I, I don't know if I could even approach him because I, I, I feel so ashamed of everything that I've done in the past and, and uh, I, I don't even know if I could even approach him. I might just, you know... Uh, Look at him out from the tree. If y'all don't know that reference from the Bible, I suggest you look it up. It's a good story. I'm not going to tell you about it, but I want because I want you to actually look it up. I'd probably just stand back and look out of a tree. But it's not how Jesus is. Jesus is the one that would come over to me and pick me up and say, you haven't got anything to be ashamed for. Your blood covered. The sins of the past have been 
buried in the deepest, darkest sea. You know, there has been times where the devil just got me down and, he, you know, got my mind thinking about everything that I had done in the past, you know, where I've made a mistake or I've done this or said this because i got a big mouth and I can't control it. And then all of a sudden the Lord will say, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because he doesn't remember it. He forgot all about it. Whenever we ask for forgiveness, the Lord forgets about that sin. It's buried in the deepest darkest sea. It's gone. It's covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He died upon the cross so we could have forgiveness. The truth of the matter is, Jesus only had one responsibility to die upon that cross for the forgiveness of man's sin so we could be saved. The fact that he keeps forgiving us of our sins when we mess up is called grace and mercy. I went I'm fixing to close. Went and got some glasses yesterday. I say glasses, but uh, pretty much they're handing me uh, some sunglasses and a cup because I can't see that good. <laughs> and um, it's a joke. Oh. Wait while you finish laughing. But anyway, yeah, my vision is pretty poor. But when I went and uh, the lady said, go ahead and pick out which frames you like, look. And my wife was there and I said, I said, I'm not going to look because uh, I said, as you could see, a good big old shabby beard. I don't spend a whole lot of time looking in a mirror. I ain't the one that has to look at me. My wife does. And uh, every what she says is all right. Well, that's good enough for me. And uh, I thought about that. And it's so relevant. We think that we have to look at ourselves. But take off the mask and let God look at your soul. Let God open up to God. I was driving down the road the other day. I've actually been to a lot of doctor's appointments lately. And uh, it's really got my anxiety up, to be honest with you, because of uh, the COVID and everything. And uh, I'm going, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to be cautious because I have children and a wife and I don't want to be responsible for getting everybody infected, but um, <clears throat> it, and that's why my anxiety was up because I'm going to a place literally where there are sick people and it was literally, I was about to have a panic attack and um, the Lord calmed me down he really did uh, I, I was fixing to have an x-ray done and uh, I, I was you know uh, breathing 90 to nothing because I was like okay excuse me and uh, my I got this mask on I am full I'm in a place full of sick people and I am not very happy. <laughs> and I started freaking out. I really did. And uh, the Lord calmed me down. But that wasn't even what I was going to say. I don't remember which doctor's office was I was going to or what time it was that I was driving somewhere. Because, well... I'm an old man, so driving somewhere nowadays is like a big deal to me. But uh, I didn't turn the radio on. 
didn't have my gospel music playing. I said, instead, I just started talking to God. Just, the Bible says that you talk to him like a friend talks to a friend. So that's what I did. I started telling him everything that was bothering me. Every little thing. And part of me was thinking, you know, the Lord's probably up there thinking, what a whiner. And But he's not. The Bible says he sees the sparrow when it's sold. The bird, when it falls from its nest, he grieves. He loves us so much that he counts every hair, numbered every hair on our head. Nowadays, uh, he can only count to two, probably on mine. But, um, I did. I had a nice, long, long, deep conversation where it wasn't just, you know, like... Lord, I pray for this one, I pray for that one, I thank you, Lord, and then we say amen, it was just more like, Lord, I, I don't know, I, I just feel bad today, Lord, um, I, I feel bad because this is going on, or this happened, and uh, I, I don't know how to handle it, I'm not very good at handling my emotions anyway. And I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you're pr probably tired of hearing about me and uh, my issues. And I, I didn't know where this was going to go. I had no idea. But uh, take off the mask. Not quarantine-wise. No, no, no. Do the right thing now. Keep it, keep it on. Uh, on the pandemic, you know. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I had to wear one the other day, and uh, it just, for hours, it, no, 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 but anyway, not about, not about the quarantine, but take off the mask that is covering up all those hidden and hurt feelings, all that stuff that you wouldn't tell anybody else, tell it to God, get it all out of there, because your soul may depend upon it. Heavenly Father, I thank you today. Lord, I know this has been weird, an odd sermon, but it's been a complete sermon. I didn't uh, forget or stop or have to shut it off or anything. And I'm thankful for that, Lord. And I praise you for it. Lord, I pray now that that these words would just touch someone. Lord, that's all I want. I, I, I get so downhearted because I want the, the message, the sermons, Lord, to go out and touch somebody. I want them to just move upon someone and Make a difference in someone's life. God, I pray that this something that I said would go forth. That you would anoint it, Lord, and it would go forth and it would help someone. Lord, that's all I want. It's to see people saved and their lives spiritual lives grown closer to you Lord and God I pray if there's one person maybe they've never even considered a relationship with you Lord I pray that you would move upon their soul and God that you would Minister unto them, pull them in, Lord, and help them and show them through this message that there is a better way. You don't have to be stuck with anguish, grief, pain, hurt. You can have freedom in the Lord. You could take off that mask. 
And Lord, I pray that they would pray this prayer, Lord. That if they believe in their heart that you are, are the Son of God. You came to earth. You performed miracles and did so many wonderful things. And you was crucified and rose again the third day. The Bible says if we believe that in our heart and confess it with our mouth that we are saved, we're a new creature in Christ and the devil hasn't got anything to hold over our head. All the sins of the past are gone. They're gone. Hallelujah. A couple of things I want to encourage you to do. To uh, to do, um, I can't make you do anything, but I want to encourage you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my sinuses are. I don't know. Every time I step outside, I come back in, my lungs crack, crack with the ragweed. I think is what it is, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, a couple of things I want to encourage you to do. Um, continue one scripture a day it, it, no matter you know how busy your life is or, or, or what you're doing just one scripture a day at least now, I will I would very much encourage you just to dig into the Bible and, and um, to enjoy the words of the Lord but um, at least one scripture a day at least and I want you to I want to encourage you also sit down with the Lord at a table at a stump in a car um, at a river bank anywhere and just start talking now, there may be people around that might think you're off in the head a little bit. Well, that's all right. Let them think what they want to think. We can't control what they think. We can only control what we do. And we can only control our thoughts and our actions. And our soul matters more than what someone else thinks. I want to encourage you. Sit down, just talk to him like a friend talks to a friend. Take off the mask. Let him in. Tell him your deepest thoughts. Maybe things about your marriage or your kids that you don't tell anybody. Anybody. Tell the Lord. Let him in. Let him know everything. I love each and every one of you, and I'm sorry this has been kind of a, you know, weird sermon. Uh, I'm just happy I didn't have to stop. Hey, to me, that's awesome. Because, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I've been having that medical issue with um, blanking out and stuff. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, may have been weird, but, uh, you know, the, I didn't have anything. The Lord just said, uh, do a video. So, I did a video. And, um, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about that shame that we cover up. All those stuff deep inside of us, that guilt. Take off the mask. Let the Lord in. I love each and every one of you. I hope everybody has a great week. And um, stay safe. Um, I said it a minute ago. About the pandemic thing. You know, the corona thing. Do the right thing. You know, but protect yourself and protect others. Because it, we think that, oh, well, if I get it, it ain't no big deal. You know, let's... It may not be a big deal if you get it, but what if you transfer it to somebody else who it is a big deal to? 
and uh, then it would be tragic. So, you, you know, keep that in mind, and that's just a thought. I love you. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful time this week in the Lord. And remember, all you have to do anytime, any place, is call upon the name of the Lord, and He is right there for you. Praise God. Praise God.